strip. It's carrying the main spacecraft bus portion of Juno. You can see it in this box here. The high gain antenna was also on this flight in a separate box. The solar arrays, the three large solar arrays, had been transported by truck earlier. The C-17 crew was from Charleston. Uh, they gave us a superb ride, a smoothest ride, um, much smoother than the rocket will be. Here you see the ramps at the back of the C-17 folding down in preparation for uh, offloading the two big boxes. This is the one containing the spacecraft bus being slowly rolled down out of the C-17 onto the tarmac. We landed at about 7.45 p.m. and so by this time it was uh, quite dark. This is the truck that transported the spacecraft bus over to AstroTech. A similar truck carried the Huygen antenna in its slightly smaller box. Uh, we arrived at AstroTech uh, around 2 a.m. and we waited until the next morning before picking the box up off the truck with a forklift and then putting it into the truck lock here at the AstroTech Building 1 facility. We closed the door on the truck lock and then proceeded with the unpacking of the spacecraft before moving it into the clean room. So here you see the uh, spacecraft bus being unpacked. We double bagged it for um, extra contamination controls. And um, you can on, on the sides you can see the solar array simulators. Those are not the flight solar arrays um, that we carried on that flight. The uh, bus was taken into the AstroTech clean room. It's on the rotation fixture now in the background, and the rotation fixture is uh, over on its side, which is a position that we used to access and work on the spacecraft most of the time. In this view, you can see the high gain antenna being attached to the struts that are on top of the vault, which is all on top of the spacecraft core bus. When we do a hazardous operation such as this, we're always careful with uh, QA and safety. I mentioned that the solar rays had come down by truck uh, a couple weeks before the spacecraft arrived. We deployed each of the arrays, tested the uh, solar cells, and here you see some of the blanketing going on on the mag boom, which is uh, on the end of wing one. The blankets are used both for thermal reasons and also for micrometeoroid protection. We have 264 blankets on the Juno spacecraft. It's really a, a phenomenal blanketing job. It took a lot of detailed work. Now we're putting Wing 1 onto the spacecraft for the final time. You can see Wing 2 there in its stowed configuration in the background, and here's Wing 1 flying in carefully towards the, uh, the main bus. And uh, they're just going to be attaching it onto the forward deck and the toggle link assembly. We deployed each of the arrays once they were installed on the spacecraft uh, with the firing of test separation nuts. Here you see a container that they're taping on to catch the separation nut as it flies out. So that's exactly what's going to happen five minutes after separation. We're going to fire the top pair of separation nuts and then we're going to fire the bottom pair and the arrays will start to deploy. On Earth, we cannot have the solar arrays deploy as they will in space, so there's a, um, a very carefully constructed support equipment a set of um, fixtures that support the wings, and we just walk them out manually. We follow that up with a test of the solar cells to make sure that uh, the strings that make up each circuit are connected properly and um, providing the connection into the power bus. Here's a view of the Juno spacecraft with all wings stowed. They've all been tested successfully, and we're trying to um, move to our next step, which is detaching it from the rotation fixture and moving it over onto a transporter to go over for fueling. Uh, here is a picture of the spacecraft uh, during its wet spin test. It's already been fueled. Um, you can see the beautiful uh, MWR antennas and the instruments uh, as it rotates. This uh, wet spin test was done to verify our mass model um, for all the parameters that we use in our flight software. Models matched up very well. Finally, we placed the spacecraft on the um, payload adapter and closed the payload fairing around both sides. So you can see the two fairing halves coming close together. Juno is not uh, so tall to fill the, uh, the top side of the fairing, but it needed the five meter fairing for the width. So here we are completing the close-up of the fairing activity, and um, they've removed the uh, fairing support fixtures. So now you can see the uh, nitrogen backfill 
pipe there and uh, on this view they're connecting the uh, the payload fairing with Juno inside to a, a crane it's going to lift it up and place it down onto the truck this is a, a special truck called a KMAG which we use to transport the payload fairing containing Juno out to the launch pad. This is still at AstroTech. You can see they're getting ready to uh, disconnect the crane and move the, uh, the whole truck and Juno uh, off to the launch pad. So here it comes. We left the AstroTech facility around 2 a.m. We had crews that pre preceded this uh, transport convoy to make sure the roads were clear. Here you see the KMAG slowly moving out of the uh, building at AstroTech. The KMAG did reach a top speed of about 10 miles per hour, so it took three or four hours for uh, the whole convoy with the payload fairing to make it from the AstroTech facility out to the uh, vertical integration facility at Slip 41. So we went off into the night. Um, the roads were cleared. We had appropriate convoys. Uh, we got the spacecraft and the inside the fairing safely conveyed out to the launch pad. Well, Jan, let's uh, go to the other side of this now. After we've come off the rocket, which I gather is like 57, 58 minutes after launch. Mm -hmm. um, tell us what's going to happen in the first five minutes, the first 10 minutes, the first couple of hours. Well, the first things that we're going to do um, is establish communication with our uh, ground station in Canberra. We will be uh, looking to um, confirm that link uh, within the first five minutes or so after we separate from the Centaur upper stage. The Centaur will leave us at a spin rate of about 1.4 RPM. Five minutes after separation, we will fire um, the first pair of solar array SEP nuts to deploy um, the arrays, and we do that at five minutes. We do the next pair at six minutes. That releases the arrays. The arrays will deploy in a couple minutes. Um, as they deploy, it's like an ice skater extending her arms, and, and we will spin down to about 0.4 RPM then uh, we will uh, use our own thrusters to spin us back up to our 1 RPM cruise spin rate. The launch vehicle should leave us oriented within about 20 degrees of sun so that we should be able to get sunlight on the solar cells immediately and start recharging our batteries. If it does not, we have the capability to detect that and then precess the spacecraft so that the arrays will be pointing at the sun and being able to um, recharge the batteries. Once we have those solar arrays deployed and, and sun on the arrays, we're in a power stable and, and spin stabilized condition. And so um, that's the moment I'm looking forward to. Well, Jan, thank you very much. And uh, we'll be looking forward as much to uh, spacecraft